Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. I'm going to come out here where I can be seen a little bit better. Uh, we're glad to have you here as we commemorate the baptism of our Lord. And so it's only right and salutary, as we used to say, that Hazel is here to be washed in the waters of baptism as well. As a matter of fact, for many years, this was one of four sun tra traditional Sundays in the church year when baptisms were performed. So we're glad to have the family here, and we look forward to that later in the service. A couple of announcements as we get going. Uh, senior high, we will be meeting tonight back in the youth room for a movie and a quick trip pizza starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, I think we're going to pick Godspell for tonight. So if you haven't ever seen the movie, uh, it's a great movie. And the star is somebody who is still, uh, you'd never recognize him, but is still active today. So that's tonight at 6. Poinsettias, if you have not picked up your poinsettia, they are in the back hall. This door is open, so you can go through there after the service. There are bags back there as well. So we invite you to please pick up your poinsettias. Today, uh, the fourth graders will meet for First Communion class, actually for the next three Sundays. We're gonna meet in the family room so we can use the TV, which means that the uh, Bible study that normally meets in there between services, we're gonna, they're gonna grab uh, some tables at the back of Fellowship Hall. So if you normally are part of the Bible study that's in there, uh, you can grab some coffee and, and head back to some tables in Fellowship Hall. We wanna say thanks to Ernie Vold uh, for sponsoring our flowers today. Uh, as Ernie turns 90, uh, no, 91 tomorrow. And we also want to say happy birthday to Marion Ballard, whose birthday was yesterday. Maestro. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Ernie and Marion. Happy birthday to you. And I can look up. <laughs> Ernie's open about him being 91. I can look up Marion, but it'll cost her $50 for me not to say anything. <laughs> uh, and then I uh, have to end uh, kind of a somber note. We asked for prayers for the Wayne Reitz family. Wayne uh, passed away early this morning. So we will give you more details as we get them on arrangements uh, for that. The Twesmies uh, have some information on a very important ministry that continues in this area. And so I'm going to ask Tom and Rosemary to come up. And as I do that, uh, I want to thank again uh, Tom for taking on the role that he has. Um, this ministry was in possibility of being, uh, being lost unless he and Pastor Dave Christensen stepped up. So I'll let them tell you more. Good morning. I just wanted to bring a little information to the congregation about something we got involved in. Um, if you remember back in August, there was a notice in the bulletin every Sunday down at the bottom that said, we are looking for a president or co-president for sleep and heavenly peace. And every Sunday we looked at that and Rosie would go, you need to do that. And I said, well, I don't know. Well, finally, if we didn't get a, a president or co-president by the 1st of September, they were going to disband the chapter. And I didn't want that to happen. So finally, two of us stepped up. Um, what? Oh. The thing I think that put me over the edge, I had a lady call me from in town here who had been involved with this project. And just out of the blue, she called me and she says, you know, they're looking for a president for the Sleep in Heavenly Peace chapter. And I said, yes, I do. And she says, I think you ought to do it. And I said, oh, I don't know. And I said, she said, yes. Well, that made me call and decided to get involved. And uh, it has been great. Sleep in Heavenly Peace, as you probably know, is a volunteer organization. It started in Idaho in 2012, and we build beds and provide beds and bedding and mattresses 
and quilts for kids that don't have a bed. And I never dreamt that there were so many uh, children that didn't have a bed. Since it started here in Tremplo County in 2018, since that time they've delivered over 550 beds. Um, since October of this year, we have delivered 34 or 35 beds. Um, there's, a, there's a real need out there. Um, everything is volunteer, everything is done on donations. Um, we've gotten a number of donations from this congregation and we really appreciate any donations that we get. Um, it's, it's a real rewarding experience. I want to have Rosie tell you about some of the things that, that uh, she's been involved in. My first experience was with um, Dennis and Allison Barca. Um, they took me with when they went to install two beds. And first of all, they have installed over a hundred and over a hundred beds in the years that they've been involved. You go into the home, and there's a vetting process. So it, you, you know, you just don't call up Tom and say this. The call goes into the national office, and then they forward it, and they are vetted. But you go into a home, and you see this home with no furniture, a bed for the parents, a crib for a baby, and then a seven-year-old child who has no bed. So you, you install this bed, and it makes me emotional because I get home and I think, oh, we have so much, you know, and there are so many that don't have any. This week, Tom and I, our first solo uh, install, um, a seven-year-old child who said, oh, I don't have to sleep with my mommy anymore. It was the first bed that he had had. And, and lastly, I want to say, Franz Karlstrom has been, like I said to Tom, he probably saved our marriage. In that, in that I am somewhat computer literate, Tom is not. What we didn't know was that all of this stuff now is computerized. So we've been struggling with that aspect of it. Inventory had to be in yesterday. Tom and I did the physical inventory. I could not figure out how to do the online inventory. So I talked to Franz, who has also worked with the build part of it, and he said, sure, I'll stop by. You know, he answered the questions, he took the material we had, went home, did it, and it was done. And I thank him so much, too. Um, lastly, what we ask for is your prayerful support, because this is really much more of a challenge than we ever expected it to be. And if you are so inclined, we always can use financial support. And I don't think Tom mentioned that this is Tremplo and Jackson counties. That is where our chapter is. Um, and it's just, it's just a very rewarding kind of thing. Thank you. Also, if anybody is interested in becoming a delivery team, uh, we can always use delivery people. Um, it takes a little time, but it's very rewarding. So if you're interested, let us know. Thank you. Uh, let's give them a round of applause, yes. We do a lot, we talk a lot about mission and giving in this congregation. This congregation provides a lot of great opportunities to serve, um, but when you're talking about something that's right here in our backyard, uh, how many of you figured 550 beds in four years? Not me, <laughs> right here in our, our backyard, so thank you for that. I invite the congregation, there any, are there any other announcements? By the way? All right, I invite the congregation to please stand as our gathering bell <coughs> gathers us for worship. In the beginning at creation, the spirit hovered over the waters of the deep. In the waters of the flood, God cleansed the earth and humankind. God caused the waters to part so that Israel could cross from slavery to liberation. God formed Jesus in the waters of Mary's womb. Jesus taught us how to live by washing his disciples' feet in water, drinking water from a well 
Jesus met a Samaritan woman, the first person to recognize that he was the Christ. Today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus the Christ. God meant for Jesus to be the firstborn in a large family. Let us follow our brother, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to turn in your red hymnals to number 732, Born and Cry, and be aware of how the uh, verses work on that song. gather together as people of God, knowing that God is present, knowing that this is holy time. And so we begin our worship service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God of life and love, your voice thunders above the sound of loud waters. You sit enthroned above the floods of life. As Jesus heard you speak to him in his baptism, may we also hear you calling us your beloved. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our brother. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading is from Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. Here is my servant, who I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. 
Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you up by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open, to open the prison of those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord that is in my name, is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. For they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Acts 10, 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace of, by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in both Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. And all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Vern. We could have a children's sermon if there are any kids who wanted to come up, but you know what? We're going to do it out here today. How about that? You mind having a seat right about here? You can sit right on the floor. Good morning. I want to ask you a question today. Do you notice anything different in here? Yeah. That banner, this... What does it say? Yeah. Do you know who Hazel is? Any of you? You do. It's your cousin. And the rest of us are going to meet Hazel in just a little while during the service. We are going to, we are going to take part in what's called a baptism. You know what that is? Yeah, you've been here enough to see. Yes. Well, we're not going to dip her head in the water, but we are going to dip into the water and take that water and put it right on her forehead and proclaim on behalf of God that she is a child of God for how long? Forever. Forever. Good answer. Forever. Period. That's a pretty powerful promise to make. Because forever doesn't just mean the days that we have to live our lives here, which we hope are a very long time. Yes? How many of you plan to live out to be over 100? Some of you are still thinking about it, huh? You want to see how it goes? You don't want to commit right now. I don't blame you. And truthfully, we don't always get to decide these things. They just kind of happen. We were talking about that the other day at our house with our grandchildren. And one of them said that she didn't ever, ever, ever want to see Grandma go to heaven. It made her a little sad. And so we talked about that. 
we talked about this promise that the prophet Isaiah wrote a long time ago that even before any of you were born, do you know what God knew about you? Everything. Including your name. Which makes me think God must be a pretty good name guesser if he knows what your mom and dad might be thinking about. Yes? Yeah, that's okay. That's just fine. I appreciate you trying to tell us. Sometimes it's hard to talk when there are lots of people listening, right? You kind of fumble over your words a little bit. But it wasn't hard for Isaiah to talk when God told him, you know what, my friend, my prophet, I want you to tell people that when they die, going to heaven is not like going to a strange place. That's what I think what our granddaughter was really kind of sad about is that imagining that one day grandpa or grandma might die and they might go to this strange place. But I don't think it's strange. Do you know why? Yes? Because people know that it's heaven. People know that it's heaven. And how do they know that it's heaven? Yes? Because Jesus and God live there. Because Jesus and God live there. And once, a long time ago, Jesus also lived here. here. Yeah. But here's the other thing. I don't think you're going to a strange place when you go to heaven because I think that babies like Hazel come from heaven. I think that God creates them and with the help of our moms and dads, they are brought into this world. So I said to our granddaughters, I don't think you should be so sad. I know that saying goodbye to someone can be sad, but thinking about where they go is kind of like them going home. Do you like to go home? Yeah. When church is over, are you planning to go home? No. Where are you going? going to my You're going to go to your grandma's and celebrate Hazel's baptism, I bet, huh? Mm. And then after that, are you going home? Yeah, eventually we all have to go home. That's what makes, it's one of the things that makes the ministry that Tom and Rosemary were talking about so special and so important is that there would be a bed there for every child who has a home, but not a bed. They want to put a bed into that home for them so that when they go home, they feel good about it. They're proud to have a bed. They're safe, they're warm, they have a comfortable place to sleep at night. In baptism for Hazel and for all of you, God has promised that you have a place to go when that time comes that you leave this world, and I hope that it's a very, very long time. Yesterday there was a funeral here for a man who was 101. That's a pretty good life, don't you think? Yeah. Pretty good life, no matter how long you spend here. You will, as God's children, all of us who have been baptized in Jesus' name, will spend forever in a home that is prepared for us. God's been waiting for us to come back home. In time, we will. But until then, I hope you enjoy all the days of your life, I hope you spend them well. I hope you remember to laugh when something is funny and cry when something is sad. Say your pleases and thank yous. Fold your hands and close your eyes and bow your heads at night and thank God for the day that you have been blessed with. For each and every day, according to the psalmist, is a gift from God. Would you pray with me? Fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, and we'll pray together like this. You say what I say. Dear God... Thank you for baptism. When we are baptized, we become your children forever. In Jesus' name, we say, Amen. Thank you very much for coming up. You can go back and sit in the pews. It's probably more comfortable there, huh?
Would you please stand as you are able for our gospel reading? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew records beginning at verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. If you pay attention when you are reading the Gospels and you lay the accounts of Jesus' baptism as they are recorded in all four Gospels alongside of one another, not all the details are the same, but there is one thing that is the, the same throughout all four accounts that the Gospel writers record. That's an important piece of information to know about this event, but also to know about any event that happens in Scripture. Folks, the more times that it is repeated, the more times that it is included in various places, the more important it is to stop and pay attention to what we are being told here. And what we are being told here in this account of Jesus' baptism is that when he came up out of the water, according to all the Gospel writers, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, descended upon Jesus Christ. That should make for a proclamation that no one can argue with. You likely know by now that other accounts, other stories told in the Gospels sometimes conflict one another, sometimes they add other details that aren't in a particular version, sometimes they're just kind of all over the place and you're going to kind of sort through it all and figure it out. But here it is as plain as the nose on our face. When Jesus is baptized, God's Spirit descends into the world upon Jesus, anointing him for the ministry that is his to carry out. From my perspective, it is probably the clearest definition or example of God's Spirit being present in the world that I can think of. Most of the time when you start to talk about God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, whatever you want to call that part of the tri triune God that we worship, it's really a slippery fish to try to define exactly what that is. Is it something that you can see? Is it something more along the lines of something that you can feel? Or when you have experienced it, is it only with hindsight that you can look back and say to yourself with confidence, well, by golly, what do you know? The Holy Spirit was present, and I wasn't even fully aware at the time. Elsewhere in Scripture, the presence of the Holy Spirit is at best a little confusing, overbearing even, and difficult to grasp. On the one side, quite literally, to my left and to your right, beginning in the corner over here, is a depiction of God's Holy Spirit as we first know it to have come into the world as a strong wind that blew over the chaotic waters and calmed them down. and then began to separate the water from the dry land. Elsewhere in Scripture, we learn that the Holy Spirit can be a wind as on the day of Pentecost that blows into town and causes all sorts of confusion, linguistically and otherwise. 
the mighty wind that announces the empowerment of the church, the gift that Jesus had declared would come to his disciples if they only waited long enough, it would come to them, and sure enough it did, in a great and mighty wind. On the other hand, to my right and your left, we see another depiction of God's Spirit coming into the world there in those panels on the day of Pentecost as flame and fire, tongues of fire, resting each one on one of the disciples' heads of all the places, setting them on fire for the ministry that the church had been called to do, putting within them a burning desire to serve as Christ had served, and to do as Christ had commanded them even greater things than what he had done. This kind of fire set the world on fire for Christ. You may recall another place where fire represents God's spirit, if you will, when a man named Moses had run away and decided he was not the man for the job, he did not like public speaking, there had been a little matter with another person who lost their life because at the hand of Moses. And Moses was convinced that he was not equipped, nor was he righteous, for he himself had taken a life. And God from a, bur a bush that burns with an unquenchable fire, calls him back, reaffirms his plan for Moses to go and lead his people. And Moses does. And you may recall how it is that he leads them out of Egypt across the Red Sea when a mighty wind had caused the sea to divide in such a way that safe passes could be had. And as they entered into the wilderness, we're told that they were led by a pillar of fire. I think I've given you ample examples of the Holy Spirit in Scripture, empowering people, individuals, and groups for the work that God has in mind for them. But now I want to shift gears. Today we bear witness to a little one who will be baptized. And you will see with your own eyes that it is indeed water that we use. It is indeed wind if the wind is coming out of the one who reiterates the promises from God of long ago that his children are precious and his desire since their creation has been to reclaim the relationship in a rightful way so that they may never be separated from him. We will take light, fire, and we will put it to a candle that will be given to Hazel's family as a reminder of this day. And we will take water from the basin and pour it over her head and proclaim the promises. But my question for you today is this. Where in all of this will we find the Holy Spirit present here in this place? I didn't know. I didn't know how to put that to words, and it bugged me all week long. I think it even made me more grumpy than normal, to be honest with you. The other night, I sat up on the edge of the bed for long enough that Val thought there was something wrong with me, again, and asked me, what is going on with you? You won't lay still. Your legs just keep going, and you're up, and you're down, and what, what's the deal? And honestly, I think it was trying to figure out how to put into words what I believe is going to happen here today in just a little while. 
how can we put our finger on the work of the Holy Spirit when a child is brought to this baptismal font and we pour water over their head or maybe dip their head in the water, huh? Whatever it takes. Where is the Holy Spirit at work? We are not likely, for it has not happened in my time with you, we are not likely to see a dove descend from the heavens and proclaim anything today. We are not likely to set the church on fire. Please don't set the church on fire. We are not looking for a mighty wind that might come and take out the windows or take the roof off the church or just like blow it all open. We don't really hope that that's what happens. But here's what I think will happen. And you'll notice that the words don't come from me. I had to go look them up. The Holy Spirit is this. The mysterious power or presence of God in nature or with individuals and communities, inspiring or empowering them with qualities they would not otherwise possess. We are all going to be moved today by the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of this little one, Hazel. We are going to conspire. Now, if I use that word, Mark gets a little nervous because he knows that that word in the dictionary means that we are going to join together to do something devious to another person. We're going to try to deceive them or trick them or do harm to them by conspiring as a group, unbeknownst to that person, to do that to them. But that's not what that word first meant. Please make note of this. Conspire means to breathe together before it ever meant to do anything malicious or deceitful to another person. We are going to breathe together the Spirit of God. Lara is going to bring her daughter forth, and we are going to pour water over her head, and Lara is going to commit herself as a parent to raising this child, Hazel, in the Christian faith and those whom she has deemed worthy to be baptismal sponsors, even a little one, younger than normal, but kind of cool. She has chosen people who will encourage her in that work, who will support her and help her, and she has invited, not knowing who would be here to bear witness to this blessed event, she has invited every single one of you here today to conspire with her for the sake of her daughter, that the Holy Spirit would come to her and work within her, watch over her, inspire her as she grows in years and in understanding, lead her to be the person that God created little Hazel to be. And we are going to do this together. Now, for a while we did this not together. And it was okay. But it was something so much less than what it could be because now all of us are a part of this. We are all going to breathe in and breathe out and know the rhythm of the Holy Spirit. We are going to act as God's people collectively for the sake of this little one and all the little ones who have been brought to this baptismal font since this church has been in existence. It is our opportunity to bear witness to the world what the Holy Spirit in baptism, not Jesus' baptism, where the clouds open and the dove descends. That would be pretty cool, though, and none of us would ever forget that. But let us not forget the commitment that we make today the day that we celebrate Jesus' baptism. Let us not forget our commitment to this little one and to all who come and gather here to receive the sacrament of the Holy Spirit, of Holy Baptism, excuse me. In Jesus' name, amen.
We'll continue with our hymn, uh, next hymn in your bulletin. I invite the congregation to please stand as you are able and join with me confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we make ready to bear witness to holy baptism. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. I invite the baptismal party to come forward, if you would, please. We'll have Mom over on this side and the baptismal sponsors over there. this in? Got it? Ready? Good job. Let us begin. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of holy baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Lara, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace of God, do you desire to have your daughter Hazel baptized in Christ's holy name? If so, please respond, I do. As you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities 
to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in Hazel's hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and in prayer so that she may learn to trust God, to proclaim Christ through word and deed, to care for others in the world God has made and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your daughter Hazel grow in the Christian faith and life as you are so empowered? If so, please respond yes with the help of God. Chris and Anna, Elizabeth, do you promise to help nurture Hazel in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? Will you help her to live in the covenant of her holy baptism? Will you encourage her as she grows in years and in understanding in her faith? If these are your intentions, please respond yes with the help of God. People of God gathered in this holy place to bear witness to this blessed event, I ask of you, do you promise to support Hazel and show her how to be faithful members of God's holy church? If so, please respond yes with the help of God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river Jordan your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from sin, and you raise us up to new life in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the holy waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Are we ready? Just lay her back, if you can. Hazel, Elizabeth... Milton Niesven, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons a new birth, you cleanse them from sin, and you raise them to eternal life. Sustain Hazel with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Elizabeth, or excuse me, Hazel Elizabeth, Child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. At this time, I'd like to invite forward a representative from our prayer shawl ministry to present uh, Hazel with her prayer shawl. Hazel, I am honored to wrap you in this baptismal shawl on behalf of this congregation and our prayer shawl ministry. It is our gift to you to celebrate and commemorate this special day in your life. Today, through the sacrament of holy baptism and the waters of holy baptism, you are a child of God's. Your name is written in the book of heaven, and you are an heir to his eternal home. The white stitches in this shawl represent the Holy Spirit which is your Heavenly Father's gift to you. Unlike our gift, His gift is the most precious gift you will ever receive. It is a gift that will never grow old, a gift you won't be able to give away because Pastor Terry sealed it in you a few moments ago when he marked you with the cross and said, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. While this shawl was being made, prayers were said. 
prayers for protection and guidance, protection from the ways of the world that could pull you away from your Heavenly Father, and prayers for guidance, guidance for your mother and sponsors, that they will help you grow in your Christian faith in the months and years to come. So whenever you are wrapped in this shawl, Hazel, may you feel your Heavenly Father's arms around you. May it be a reminder to your parents and sponsors of the promises they made to you and on your behalf today. But most importantly, may it be a reminder to you as you grow older of the promise your Heavenly Father has made to you through his gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise that he will never leave you. He is with you always until the end of time. God bless you. And now a blessing for the baptismal party. Receive this lighted candle. May it be a symbol that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And may it remind you to let the light of Christ always shine in your home, always. Anna, Chris, Elizabeth, as baptismal sponsors for Hazel, you have made a commitment to surround her with your love, your prayers, your words of encouragement, and your acts of support as Lara seeks to raise your beloved daughter, Hazel, in the Christian faith. May God bless your work as parents and as baptismal sponsors. I love you. May I? Okay, buddy. There we go. People of God, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our newest member in Christ, Hazel Elizabeth Milton Niesven. She seems to be unusually drawn to you, Duke. I don't know what that's all about. Oh, okay. <laughs> Folks, thank you for conspiring together on behalf of Hazel. We'll continue our worship service with the gathering of our offering.
invite the congregation to please stand as you are able and join in our offertory. Great saving God, you have gathered us into one baptism regardless of our backgrounds and conditions. Therefore, we praise you with our tithes and offerings. May they join with others to become a mighty river, bringing your peace and healing to the world. Amen. Gathered together and called as disciples of Jesus Christ, we pray for the world and those in need. Gracious God, you use water to cleanse and nourish the earth and to grow the forests and the fields. You provide us water to cleanse and nourish ourselves. And in the waters of baptism, you anoint us with the Holy Spirit as you did your son so long ago. Kindle your spirit in us each day to live out our baptismal faith and to be faithful to the path you place before us. Merciful God, hear our prayer. God of peace, you sent Jesus into the world for all people, and he sent his disciples to baptize all nations. Guide the people of this world to reject prejudices, turn away from divisiveness, and change warring hearts. Strengthen leaders on every level to seek decisions in the interest of the common good, and bless the work of individuals and organizations striving for a better world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Compassionate God, we ask your presence with any for whom this is a time of sadness or difficulty. Strengthen those broken in mind, body, or spirit. Comfort all who mourn losses of any kind and provide for the needs of the vulnerable. Especially today, we name before you Sharon Kirby, Kristen Coder, Marcel Gunderson, Bob Johnson, Dan Sieg, Bob Berg, Arnie Rongstead, Penny Flickershaw, Laurie Holmgreen, Jimmy Johnson, Dorothy Elliott, Rachel Beatty, Janet Johnson, Mary Allen, Jed Sieg, and Randy and Carol Messick. Bless all caregivers and use us as your ministers to people we meet who are in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We trust these in all our prayers spoken and unspoken to you, O God, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and boldly pray as he has taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. May the God who called Jesus beloved speak words of blessing to you and empower you to bring that good news to others who still need to hear it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing sending hymn number 881.
Go forth joyfully. God is with you. Bring peace and hope to all you meet. And may God's eternal love shine through you always. Thanks be to God. Thank you.